Well, hello there, and you join us here today to talk about high-end watches. Now, high-end watches are usually incredibly expensive, but they aren't always. If you're looking for a high-end watch, please do check out watchfinder.com and click the link in the description below. It really helps us out. Thank you very much. Tom, I know you are someone who does enjoy the finer things in life, and preferably the idea is to enjoy them at as minimal cost to yourself as possible. Is that an ethos you can get behind? Yes, minimal cost is very much my credos. Um, and actually, I think it's a pretty fun time to be into watches because you can get some quite cool, complicated stuff for not much money. I think there's a lot of brands out there that are starting to crack the code of making wacky stuff and, and not charging very much for it, um, which is nice. Well, why don't we have a look at some of those? Uh, here are 10 high-end watches that are a lot cheaper than you think. Tom, do you want to get the ball rolling? Sure, yeah. My first one is the Ferrer Rocher which is dangerously close to sounding like the chocolate they spoil guests with at the ambassador's <laughs> reception. Um, but yeah, no, it's named after an explorer, Anthony de la Roche. Um, so because this is a world timer for explorers, presumably. So a world timer with 24 time zones and date, um, an automatic mechanical watch here. You can see it has a central engraved world map in, in powder blue there, which uh, is a lovely focal point on the center of the textured gloss style in midnight blue and loom lovers rejoice because this has applied markers and numerals which are solid blocks of grade a super luminova and the steel edged alpha hands are also infield with mint green grade a super luminova so highly visible at night which is really cool 39 millimeter case uh, is highly polished in steel um, and there's some nice uh, brushed and micro blasted details there on the edges and things um, it's got two crowns uh, for the the world timer so the main crown controls the time date and universal 24-hour disc now i think um the universal 24-hour disc is uh it's just essentially a gmt hand that's been repurposed as as like an entire disc uh this is a uh a, a, it's powered by a swiss made etta 28931 elabore movement um and then you've got a, a second offset crown on the side which controls the inner bezel to set the uh the 24 time zones there and and appearing Appearance-wise, you know, when I see a world timer, when I see that layout with all those exotic place names around the outer edge of the dial, it just makes me think of like a Patek Philippe, uh, you know, one of their world time complications, and 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 that's that's quite a, a high end association to have. Um, but this watch, you know, is only costing one thousand two hundred ninety five pounds, so massive savings. Um, so uh, yeah, really cool, really cool proposition from Farah, um, nice uh, English watch brand doing very interesting things. Did you say Anthony De La Rocha? Wasn't he in Rage Against the Machine? Yes, that's right. Yes. Um, if you if you need a movement with the quickness or if you need a movement with a world timer function, then uh, exploring the world with his GMT world timer and taking the power back. Yes. Um, this watch will do what you tell it to. Thankfully, it isn't a, uh, this isn't an anarchist watch. It is very much a do as it's told watch. It's a very interesting use of the GMT function to turn it into a very usable world timer in a non-traditional way. And that's what keeps the cost down away from those Patek Philippe numbers. Tom, integrated fever hasn't left us just yet, and that's just as well because Straum have put their eggs in the integrated basket, but for good cause. This is the Straum Jan Mayen, which I have definitely pronounced incorrectly. It's a 39 by 11.3 millimeter thick integrated watch with a domed crystal and a steel construction. Inside the watch is a La Jupere G101, and it looks very much like a Myota, I might hear you say. Both owned by the same company, uh, Citizen. Le Jeu Perret also manufactures movements for the likes of Arnold & Son, which are incredibly complex and high finish. Um, I believe this particular architecture is shared between Le Jeu Perret and Myota, but this one is built in Switzerland and finished to a higher level. So a very nice watch with a very nice movement. 68 hours of power reserve, 100 meters of water resistance. So it does everything you need it to do in terms of the daily wearability. And as you can see, the design is rather nice too, with uh, polished edges around the Nautilus-like center links on the bracelet and a nice brushed bezel. But really the center stage here is the dial, available in red, black, blue, green, and in a slightly different design, white, 
This takes inspiration from the name, Jan Mayen. Now, Jan Mayen isn't the old lady your mother knows down the bingo. It's actually the name of a Norwegian island and uh, an entirely volcanic island at that as well. It has no permanent inhabitants there, but what it does have is an incredible landscape. As you can imagine, all of the very quickly cooled lava rock forms patterns in the ground, much like this dial texture. And it has a very, depending on the color you pick as well, eye of Sauronness to it. It's very very, very deep, very gloopy texture, which makes this watch incredibly appealing to look at. And not too bad on the old price point as well, because it's 1,600 euros. Brilliantly executed that dial, because I'm... That was exactly my thoughts. It was. I thought I didn't even need to read volcanic to see that this looked volcanic and the Eye of Sauron. All those things were I, I read from that dial without you having to say it. So it's amazing. It's incredibly intense. I love it. It's like a Grand Seiko, but like evil. Alternatively, if you don't like the centrally originating lava texture, you can go for the white dial instead, which very much looks like, you know, when they tell you not to paint the paint too thick because it'll run. And then afterwards you go, oh, they did tell me not to paint the paint too thick because it ran. It looks a little bit like that, but in a cool way. Yeah, it does. It kind of looks a little bit like Poltergeist, Simuel, you know, when they sort of like <laughs> try and get out <laughs> at night. <laughs> um, yeah. Paranormal Activity 7, my watch is haunted. It actually looks like the poster for the Frighteners. Okay, well, from the spooky ghosts to space. Next, this is the crunchily named Atawak, once a manufacturer for micro brands and now uh, its own thing. Uh, these are the very bold and futuristic watches of Atawak. And, and this time with this new watch, they've just decided to finally bite the bullet and name it the Spaceship because uh, that's what kind of all their watches really look like. This one more so than others, I think. And you can see um, just from its design, you've got like this giant sapphire crystal which uh, looks like the the spaceship cockpit canopy and the whole thing is designed to look like the command deck of a spaceship so you can see um there's a very bizarre way of telling the time as with all atawax you've got a wandering hour complication and retrograde minutes there's the constantly rotating engine of the spaceship which is a disc in the center which serves as a running second hands which is really cool um the case is 316 l steel it's it's very sleek and meticulously finished um I have had the pleasure of wearing uh, the Atawak Cobra before, and I think maybe due to its less than ergonomic design and my quite small wrists, it was a bit like strapping a rock to my arm. Um, but I think this one, I think they've gone to a bit more lengths to make it a bit more wearable. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's a bit more comfortable. Um, limited to just 300 pieces um, across all the different colours. I think there's about five colours in total. And it's 1,581 for a crazy complication and a very unique piece. See, you you don't know you're born. When I was a kid, they used to strap rocks to all my limbs and I was grateful for it. Having just one, well, that would have been a privilege, Tom. Um, of course, no prizes for guessing the inspiration for this watch and its complication. Very much an Orvirk, um, but not at Orvirk prices. So um, very, very nice from Atawak. I would like to see what they can do with their own developments because they've done a few orverky like pieces now. Uh, we know they can make it. Let's see if they can dream it. Yeah? I suppose. From one watch, Tom, with all the imagination, to another with basically none at all. This is the Oris Artelier S. Now, you might be thinking, this watch looks rubbish. How can it possibly be a high-end watch for less than I think? Let's go through the specs. 38 millimeters in stainless steel, a green sunburst dial, a Salita SW200, 30 meters of water resistance. It all sounds rather meh, um, which I believe should be probably in the dictionary by now. Meh. Actually, in Switzerland, I believe it's boof. Thank you, Tom, for that little trip around the world there. The difference with this watch here is that unlike a lot of the other Oris pieces, which are sportier, more rugged, more wearable in extreme conditions, this one is all about the luxury experience. It's simple, yes, but the execution is very, very high. The case is beautifully proportioned and well polished and finished. The hands, the markers, the print, all of those kinds of things are very, very nicely done. But that dial, especially very, very big skinny bezel, so you get as much dial space as possible, which has a very 
light sunburst to it, which gives you a great proportion of shade differences across that green. This is a watch that when you wear, you think, Holy moly, this feels like it's more expensive. It's very hard to quantify by specs alone, but it's just the, the execution of it. You put it on your wrist and all of a sudden you feel like someone important who's got things to do and they wear a luxurious watch while they do it. It's £1,600, Tom. Excellent. And of course, it's it's of that school of design that you and I favour so much where you make your product look edible and that is just the that's the pinnacle of product design for me just catches the light so nice just looks juicy what flavor do you think it would be vintage apple and barrel flavor I'm going with kale oh, contemporary um, another watch now in the podcast this is the Seiko Presage Laurel Urushi. So this is part of the Presage Craftsmanship series, uh, which celebrates the Japanese Takumi, which is uh, timepieces that are individually handcrafted by master artisans, combining all the good old traditional artistry and techniques uh, of the, the Japanese there. So the name of this watch, Urushi, refers to Urushi lacquering. Uh, so Urushi is a natural lacquer ob obtained from the sap of the Japanese lacquer tree. Amazing. They've just got lacquer on tap over there, tapped trees. Uh, so uh, the, the lacquer is then applied by hand by these master craftspeople, and it's built up layer by layer to give the dial its lovely depth there. Um, so this particular watch, the layout here is inspired by the 1930 original first Seiko watch. Um, the dial features the retrograde day, date and 41 hour power reserve indicator. Uh, there's just 1500 pieces of this design available worldwide. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Seiko's beautiful handmade artistry, history, all of that wrapped up uh, in a limited edition watch for £1,700. That is a lot of watch. Thank you, Tom. I especially like the bit you said about the thing. Yeah, that was great, wasn't it? I, I'm glad they included that. That's dedication for you. Tom, from trees to the seas, I want to show you a Fears watch, the Brunswick Aurora. This is based in a 40mm steel cushion case. You might be wondering, isn't that a Panerai case? Well, the cushion case was a very popular design at the time during the Art Deco period and the Panerai watches ended up with a pocket watch case from Rolex that just so happened to be that style when Rolex put it together for them. It's a very nice style, it means the watch wears a little bit bigger than its 40mm case size would suggest without it actually taking up more real estate on your wrist. Which means you get the best of both worlds, and having a nice big open space for the dial means that you get a nice big opportunity to use some cool materials here. In this case, we have Mother of Pearl, which is sliced into two different pieces. The center section is blued and the outer section is a donut shaped section in a more natural Mother of Pearl. Now the whole thing together, it takes uh, 20 dials to get one to pass through QC because the natural textures are very, very hard to pinpoint. But the other thing is as well, as you can imagine, oysters generally aren't flat and dial shaped. So it takes quite a few big oysters to try and find the right sections for this watch. The overall effect is a very, very beautiful light catching kind of pattern and color, which uh, doesn't actually feel too feminine at all. It is just very, very nice to look at. And it's one of those watches that when you read the time, you, you go away from it realizing you forgot to read the time entirely so you have to go in and look again um it also has the eta 2824 150 meters of water resistance and is 3850 pounds so next we have a watch from an ordain so much like seiko this is another watchmaker that knows a thing or two about enameling um these are the boys uh from uh glasgow in scotland and this is their watch the model 3 aqua so this uses their their model 3 method of enameling um which is their most technical an ambitious method to date. Uh, so it combines many different techniques from uh, from very traditional to very advanced. So you've got wood block carving and 3D scanning and stamping processes and then hand enameling. So um, you get this very beautiful result, which is this rippling water surface dial um, in this lovely cool blue hue. Um, and then they've um, put that in a very highly polished and elegant case in 39 millimeters of steel. Um, and the overall result is extremely exquisite and elegant for £3,500. And I think this is one of their most beautiful watches to date. 
Rumour has it before they tried the woodblock approach, they initially tried leaf rubbing and lino printing before settling on this approach here. And it do, it's got elegance coming out of the butt, Tom. It's beautiful. I do like, yeah. we're seeing a lot of dial textures here that are very inspired by nature, have that grand Seiko aesthetic, but each going in a slightly different direction with it relative to the natural environment of the various watchmakers in question. Love all of that, would like to see more. Tom, if you've ever considered a watch and when it comes to the question, what are the specifications you want the answer to be? Yes then welcome to the Sartre Billard SB04. So for the most part, this is a picture frame of a watch for you to uh, be allowed to do what you like with. It has a 40 millimeter by 11.5 millimeter thick stainless steel case with 30 meters of water resistance. In the back is another Lajou Pere, the G100 this time. The hands you can pick from a couple of choices and then the dial, that's up to you. Whatever you can think of. There is, for the uh, for those who do need a bit of a helping hand, a design guide which takes you through things like colour, finishing, stones, guilloche patterns, etc, etc. Otherwise, you can just do whatever it is that you like. So I'll take you through some of the previous models that have been made because usually these pieces are all one-offs. There has been Mother of Pearl like the fears. There's been tinted meteorite in bright red. There's been a painting of a bird, Tom, a Japanese mosaic stone inlay, which is stunning, silicon wafer, and there will be a few more interesting ones coming up as well because, because Sartre Billard have offered to create a few different dial designs for us to feature as a review. And when I say they will do anything, we have had some very bizarre conversations about what you can possibly put in a dial. And they're going to try and make them work too. Now these start at 4,200 euros. Of course, the final cost depends on what it is you put in there. If you're going to use dodo egg, then it might end up a bit more expensive. But ultimately, this is a very affordable way to come up with an incredibly high end custom watch nice i'm thinking purple frosted or honey gold guilloche 17 uh moving on next to um another watch with another uh beautiful dial this is the grand seiko this is similar to the anordain aqua uh this is the slga 021 and it's got a dial that evokes the windswept surface of Suwa Lake in uh, Japan's Shinsu province, uh, Shinsu being where Grand Seiko do uh, a lot of their best work. Um, so yeah, it's very tranquil, elegant dial, um, but it's got that extra uh, something, something, the utter tour de force of watch movements, Grand Seiko's own 9RA2 spring drive movement. So um, just like the beautiful, gently lapping water depicted on the dial surface you've got this second hand that is tranquil in its perfectly smooth glide as it rotates around the dial there's no tick no beat uh, just a perfect sweep and that's your spring drive uh, so inside a polished and brushed steel case slap on any old bracelet doesn't matter uh, just look at the dial and then eight thousand seven hundred pounds this is the before dawn version specifically which has the slightly darker dial which isn't as popping as the standard one which is also more expensive but in the right light it actually looks like moonlight cast across the waves and it almost starts to animate and it, it draws you in and you want to just fall into it like you know uh the water in lord of the rings with all the dead people in it don't follow the spring drive also the 9ra2 in this watch i think is one of the best finished movements that grand seiko makes that's not insanely priced at fifty thousand pounds or whatever you look at yeah. some of the bevels on there the polishing on those things oh it is a lot of watch for the money it really really is tom for our last very high-end watch for a lot less than you think i'm going to take you to the breguet tradition 7097 this is a 40 millimeter watch in white gold with 30 meters of water resistance so not really for swimming in but you don't want to swim in it anyway because really what you want to do is look at it that dial is quite crazy. All of the gubbins that are usually hidden in the back are out at the front. This is based on the subscription pocket watch style that Breguet became famous for. You can see there in the design that different things like the wheel cocks <laughs> are there held in uh, cantilevered from one end with screws and pins very much in the old style of Breguet. The big centrally mounted mainspring there too and the small sub dial at the top. I repeat, Cox. <laughs> you might be thinking, Tom, 
This seems hideously expensive. I'll tell you the price, it's £32,000. And so you might be thinking, well, it is hideously expensive, but here's the trick. For some reason, these watches take an utter bath on the secondary market and you can pick them up for around £15,000. So if you've got the money for a Daytona and you so happen to be able to pick one up at RRP, buy it, sell it, and then get one of these and then get another Daytona at RRP. That's my plan anyway. Great advice. I don't think there is better value for money in any other watch than this on the used market. Interesting. That's a strong declaration. And yeah, a Breguet, a bargain Breguet, I mean, that is that sounds too good to be true to me. I personally, however, am just going to wait for the Swatch plastic version, which will be along any day now. Mark my words. Well, there you go. Those are 10 high-end watches that are a lot cheaper than you think. Let us know your dirty little high-end watch secrets down in the comments below. Please also click the watchfinder.com link in the description. It really helps out. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.